Macedonia declared a military emergency state on its border with Greece. More than 2,000 immigrants, or more precisely refugees, from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and even as far away as Pakistan, are entering Greece daily. That's 2,000 a day. Then Greece lets them cross freely into the territory of Macedonia and from there to Serbia, Hungary, on to their destinations in Western Europe, mainly Germany, and Northern Europe, mainly the United Kingdom and Scandinavia. So what is clear by now is that immigrants do not want to stay in the territory of Macedonia. They don't want to live here. It's equally clear that as they cross Macedonia, a process which takes about 10 days, they leave behind a lot of money. They buy food, they buy bicycles, they bribe policemen and border guards. About 10 million euros a month are left behind in the local economy. So why the panic? Why the hysteria? They don't want to stay here, they're just crossing and they leave a lot of money behind. What can the science of economics tell us about immigration, especially this kind of immigration? Is it positive for the host country? Is it negative? Like every other question in economics, the answer is, it depends. As far as rich, developed countries go, immigration has only positive effects. Even illegal immigration has only positive effects. But when we talk about poor, developing countries, such as Macedonia, the effects in the short term are highly negative and dangerous. And in the long term, they are highly positive and helpful to the economy. Start with the negative impact. As refugees, or immigrants as we call them, cross into the country in huge waves, in an uncontrolled way, they put an enormous pressure on infrastructure. They consume water. They use the sewage system. They use electricity. The infrastructure is not ready for such an influx of people, more than 50,000 by now. So it tends to collapse. The second effect is that those who stay behind, the immigrants who stay behind, most of them illegally, compete with the local population for menial jobs, jobs with low level of skills, jobs for the uneducated. Because of this unfair competition by immigrants, wages tend to go down. Immigrants put downward pressure on local wages. And then we have the welfare system. Immigrants tend to consume social welfare benefits way more than the local population. This puts a huge strain and stress on the limited resources that poor countries like Macedonia have. And finally, because most of the immigrants and the refugees are young, their presence in the country increases youth unemployment. Most of the countries in the Balkans have youth unemployment, which is more than 50%. One of every two young people do, does not have a job. When immigrants come into such countries, they compete with the youth, with the young, directly on these jobs. So they increase youth unemployment. However, if immigrants are allowed to stay legally in the country, if they are allowed to build a new life in the host country, even when the country is poor, even when the country is underdeveloped like Macedonia, in the long term, there are very, very positive effects. To start with, immigrants naturally eat and they consume things. So immigrants increase domestic consumption. By increasing domestic consumption, they create new jobs for local people. Immigrants also open up new export markets in their home countries. So they bring with them networks of contacts in the region where they escaped from. And they allow local companies to export and to do business with their home countries. In the long term, immigrants pay taxes. They are very entrepreneurial. They usually open small businesses owned by families, family businesses. And so they pay taxes, they add to the tax base. And finally, most immigrants are young, as I mentioned before. So in the long term, 
immigrants rejuvenate the country. Macedonia is aging. The young are leaving. The old are staying behind. Macedonia needs new young people. Young people also pay pension contributions, so they support the pension system. Young people also pay health contributions, so they support the health system. Immigrants in the long term, even in poor countries, are a benefit and a boon. Countries who accepted immigrants in the past have flourished and prospered in the long term. An excellent example is the Ottoman Empire, who the empire opened its doors to the Jews of Spain when they were expelled in 1492. Following the absorption of the Jews in its population, the Ottoman Empire became the Ottoman Empire. The Jews contributed to its rise. So what should Macedonia do? As usual, and as the rest of Europe, Macedonia is improvising. It has no national emergency plan for the situation. It should have one. And any such plan should accept some of the immigrants, some of the refugees, and allow them to live in Macedonia. Immigrants with high skills that are needed in Macedonia, immigrants with money to invest, immigrants with contacts back in their home countries, immigrants who are entrepreneurs and will therefore employ other people. These type of immigrants, the highly educated, the highly skilled, the ones with money, should be allowed and should be welcome to stay in Macedonia because in the long term, they can contribute a lot.